Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, two questions on Gaza. Uh, the first is that given the large number of hostages who remain and the enormous humanitarian need in Gaza, do you believe that the current pause in fighting should be substantially extended despite concerns in Israel that it may be allowing Hamas to regroup? And is it possible that Israel's offensive would not resume at all? Uh, and secondly, you have stressed the importance of pursuing a two-state solution uh, for long-term peace. Many people doubt that Prime Minister Netanyahu shares that vision. What is your opinion and what are the implications if he does not? Thanks, Michael. Uh, with uh, regard to the pause, uh, look, we'd like to see the pause extended because what it has enabled, first and foremost, is hostages being released, coming home, being reunited with their families. It's also enabled us to, uh, to surge humanitarian assistance into the people of Gaza who so desperately need it. So its continuation, by definition, means that more hostages would be coming home, more assistance uh, would be getting in. So clearly, that's something we want, uh, and I believe it's also something that, uh, that Israel wants. Uh, they're also intensely focused on bringing, uh, bringing their people home. So we're working on that. Uh, as you know, we're working on that every single day. Uh, and uh, I expect to, uh, to take that up uh, tomorrow when I'm in Israel meeting with, uh, with the government. And again, we have other colleagues in the government who are uh, intensely working on that. Um, with regard to, to two states, look, I think we've been very clear from well before October 7th, in fact, from the first day of this administration, that we believe that that is the only path to enduring uh, peace, to enduring security, uh, to the preservation of Israel as a strong, secure, democratic and Jewish state, and Palestinians having uh, their legitimate uh, aspirations uh, for uh, a state and self-determination met. Uh, and uh, I think the events of October 7th uh, only further confirm that, uh, that commitment. But uh, all of this is uh, a, a process that uh, everyone will need to focus on. Right now, um, everyone is focused on uh, the day of, what's happening in Gaza right now. Uh, but we also need to be uh, focused at the same time, and we are in conversations with uh, many other countries, on what I've called both the day after and the day after the day after. Uh, by the day after, I mean what happens in Gaza uh, once um, the uh, uh, the campaign is over. Um, there are important questions about its governance, its uh, security, um, its reconstruction. Uh, a few a couple of weeks ago in Tokyo, I laid out some basic principles that we see as being uh, necessary. Uh, but also uh, the day after the day after, which is how do we get uh, on a clear path to meeting the legitimate political aspirations of the Palestinian people? which uh, really, in our judgment, is the only way to uh, durable, uh, durable peace, uh, durable security for everyone, starting with um, Israel and, uh, and Israelis. But these are conversations that we'll pursue in the, uh, in the days ahead, in the weeks ahead, uh, in the months ahead. Uh, there's a long history here. Uh, but I think we, uh, what, what this has done, what October 7th has done, among other things, is I think to refocus many countries um, in the region and, and well beyond on how do we help Israel ensure that this never happens again? And we believe that one component of that is putting in place the, the conditions for genuinely lasting, durable uh, peace and stability. And for us, uh, the, the best path there uh, goes to two states.